welcome to another informative episode of the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam question series on Exam Tricks and Tips channel. Please like, share and subscribe to get regular updates on new episode releases. Let's get started. Before we start today's episode, let's congratulate our December 2023 Cloud Practitioner graduates from Exam Tricks and Tips community. Nitesh Chaudhary, Dinesh and No Name, these community members have been following Exam Tricks and Tips series and they have recently passed Cloud Practitioner exam with flying colors. Congratulations to all of you. If I missed anyone, uh, please mention it in the channel comments. And if anyone who has cleared Cloud Practitioner exams recently or will be appearing soon, please mention it in the comments and I'll make sure that I cover it in the subsequent episodes. So congratulations to all Cloud Practitioner graduates and we'll start with the episode now. Welcome to episode 15. We'll be covering question 86 to 90 in this episode. Question number 86, which AWS service or feature can be used to create private connection between an on-premise workload and AWS cloud is my version of keywords. So we need a private connection between on-premise uh, workload and AWS cloud workload. Let's analyze each options and rule out uh, the wrong ones to get to the correct answer. Now, in this case, uh, I can see two incorrect answers. Let's go over the first one. Option A, root 53. Root 53 is a DNS service. It's a, a domain name system web service. It's not... Uh, used for connecting on-premise workload with AWS Cloud workload. So that's wrong. The second uh, wrong option is Amazon Macy. Now, Macy is used to automatically discover and classify protect sensitive data. So if you got any documentation that involves uh, PIA, personally identifiable uh, data, then Macy is a service which would, you know, go through all the documentation, highlight to you anything that is even sensitive, that needs uh, encryption, etc. So. It's not used for connection between on-premise workload and AWS cloud workload. So Messi is wrong as well. And we are left with two options. Now this is a situation where you would get wherever there are complicated questions where you are able to eliminate two easily, uh, but then choosing between the remaining two is a difficult one. And this is one of those questions. So we are left with AWS Direct Connect and AWS Private Link. But option D, Private Link is used when you communicate with a third-party VPC and it requires a network load balancer, service VPC, and an ENI custom VPC. So that's not a situation here. What you need to do here is connect on-premise workload with cloud workload. And the way the question has been worded, it appears confusing, but uh, if you just try to simplify it, you need on-prem connection between on-prem as well as AWS. And that is your AWS direct connect. And that's the answer. So D is ruled out in that particular uh, sense. So D is gone and you're left with option C, which is what the exact uh, solution you need here is. Uh, this one is a kind of a debate question, but once you eliminate uh, the wrong answers and just focus on the two that are left with, uh, uh, which is option C and option D in this case, and understand and relate the exact use case with the usage of the service or what service is made for, then you are able to select the correct answer. And that's how we got to AWS Direct Connect, which is the option C, which is the correct answer for this particular question. We have uh, come across uh, new services here, so we'll go over it. Uh, Here's a reference documentation for these two services. The first one is AWS Private Link. You can see it establishes connectivity between VPCs and AWS service without exposing data to internet. Uh, so this, this is not the use case in our case. It's for VPC to AWS services. So that's why we have not selected it. And the next service, which is the answer for this particular question, AWS Direct Connect, it creates a dedicated network connection to AWS. And that's what we needed. We needed a connection between on-prem and AWS. So we got our answer here and that's it on this question. We'll move on to next question. Question number 87, which AWS service is used to provide encryption for Amazon EBS? Read the question, mark your keyword. So the keyword here is we need a service for doing encryption. I think you have got the answer, but uh, we will use elimination techniques uh, to eliminate the wrong answers and we'll get to the correct answer that way. So first one, option A, certificate manager. Now this has nothing to do with encryption. Uh, it manages SSL and TLS certificates. If you have certificates, you can store it in Certificate Manager. Uh, it's not uh, for encryption. So that's gone. Uh, the next one, AWS System Manager. Now it manages and automates infrastructure operation. It's not used for encryption, so that's gone as well. So we're left with option C and D. Uh, let's look at option D, AWS Config. Now, AWS Config is a config management service. It is used for recording and auditing configuration changes. It's not meant for encryption. So that's gone as well and we're left with KMS and we all know KMS is the key management uh, service and used for encryption. If you want to know a bit more detail about, so, so AWS KMS is the remaining option and that's the correct answer for this. It's in, used for encryption. 
uh, it can be used for key creation. You can create customer master keys within AWS KMS to encrypt and decrypt your data. Encryption process, when you create an e EBS volume and uh, enable encryption, AWS KMS generates a unique data key for that volume. Key management aspect, the data key is encrypted using the CMK you provided and stored in alongside the volume. Access control, access to CMK is strictly controlled through AM policies, ensuring only unauthorized access control. Access to CMK is strictly controlled through AM policies, ensuring only authorized users and service can decrypt the data. Data security, when accessing the encrypted EBS volumes, AWS KMS transparently decrypts the data key using the CMK, making the data accessible to authorized users and application. So that's your AWS KMS. That's the correct answer for this particular question. It's option C. And your biggest uh, tip is if you got anything, any question related to encryption, you got to choose the answer that includes uh, AWS KMS. So that's your exam tip uh, on this. Let's look at some documentation that uh, we have come across. I think we have seen AWS key management service for the first time in the series. So let's look at the documentation for this. It creates and control keys used to encrypt or digitally sign your data. Uh, go over how it works, uh, key use cases, go over this uh, video as well. It will give you a good overview of what the service is about. That's it on this question. Let's go to the next question. Question number 88, a company wants to manage its AWS cloud resources through a web interface. Which AWS service will meet this requirement? Mark your keywords, try to find what the answer of this question could be. Here's my version of keywords. Uh, so we want to manage AWS cloud resources and uh, it needs to be through a web interface. Let's go by elimination technique again. Uh, I think the main keyword here is web interface. So if you look at AWS CLI, it is used for managing resources, but it's not web interface. It's a command line interface and that's the name command line interface CLI. So that's wrong. Uh, the next one, SDK, again, it can programmatically interact with the AWS services, but it's not, it doesn't have a web interface that can be used to control and manage the cloud resources. So that's gone. And there is a new service, uh, which we probably have not seen before, Cl AWS Cloud9. Now, uh, it's a cloud-based IDE for development. It's not, uh, not a general purpose management console for administrative tasks. So that's gone as well. And we are left with uh, our final answer here, option A, AWS Management Console. Uh, it is a web interface through which you can easily manage and administer your entire AWS environment, including resources across region and services. So that's the correct answer for this particular question. Option A, AWS Management Console. In terms of uh, new services, I think AWS Management Console itself is the new service we come across. So we'll go through the documentation for that service. Here is uh, AWS documentation for AWS Management Console. And I've highlighted uh, the key area here, the homepage that provides you access to each service console and offers a single place to access the information you need to perform your AWS related tasks. Go through this and you'll be able to uh, answer any question around this particular service. The next one, AWS Command Line Interface. You can read through it, but the key point is you can use a AWS CLI as a command line interface to manage the AWS resources. Uh, which was not the case in this particular question. And AWS Cloud9, it's an integrated development environment IDE for writing, running, and debugging code. Again, something that was not the objective of this particular question. That's it on this particular question. Let's move to the next question. Question number 89, which of the following are advantages of AWS Cloud? You have to choose two answers. We have done this uh, in the section where we have six advantages uh, of AWS Cloud. Let's go over the keywords, yeah. Advantages of cloud, that's the keyword. Let's go over uh, options. Let's eliminate the wrong options and let's figure out which one are the correct ones. So the first one, trade variable expenses for capital expenses. A similar wording has been used in the advantages of cloud section, but it's not about trading variable expenses with capital. It's basically trading fixed expenses for variable expenses. What does this mean is if you are going cloud, you're not spending any uh, upfront uh, capital for uh, building infrastructure. So. In reality, you trade fixed expenses that you would otherwise incur for variable expenses, which is on pay as you basis. This, this particular option is incorrect. If you look at what's next, that's option A gone. Let's look at what else appears to be wrong. Uh, option D, focus on managing hardware infrastructure. Now, the biggest advantage of cloud is you don't have to worry about managing hardware infrastructure. AWS will do it for you. Customer doesn't have to do that. So this is incorrect. Let's uh, eliminate that. The next one, uh, option E, over provision to ensure capacity. Again, when you go in cloud, you don't have to worry about uh, ensuring capacity. You have 
elasticity of cloud to help you. You don't need to guess the capacity or you don't have to over provision for the needs you have. For example, if Black Friday or Christmas sales are coming, you don't have to worry about over provisioning. You, as long as you have auto scaling on, AWS will manage it for you. So that's wrong as well. So we are left with two options, option B and C, and those are the correct ones, but let's go over each of them. So let's look at option C. Option C is all about deployment. You can easily deploy your applications in multiple regions around the world with just a click away with cloud infrastructure. This means you can provide lower latency and a better experience for your customer at minimal cost. Option C is correct. Uh, that's an advantage of cloud uh, computing. Uh, and option B, definitely a big advantage of cloud computing. When you use cloud uh, computing, because there are so many uh, customers who are using it, uh, you essentially get the high economies of scale and this is a advantage of cloud computing. So we got our answer. Option B and C are our correct answers for this particular question. There is the section from AWS uh, documentation for six advantages of uh, cloud computing. And you can see uh, you trade fixed expenses for variable expenses, which was worded incorrectly. So we ruled that out. Benefits of uh, massive economies of scale, exact uh, benefit, one of the option. Stop guessing capacity. It was an incorrect answer for us. So we don't have to worry about capacity. We don't have to over provision. Increase speed and agility. Uh, stop spending money running maintaining data center. So this is around the option where uh, which talked about, oh, you need to focus on maintaining hardware. And finally, is go global in minutes. That was one of the correct answers. Go global in the minutes and benefits of massive economies of scale was uh, worded exactly the way it is in the advantages. Rest were twisted and put as uh, disadvantage uh, disadvantages. So we ruled those out. So that's it on this question. Let's move on to the next one. Question number 90, which AWS cloud benefit is shown by an architect's ability to withstand failure with minimal downtime? Please uh, mark the keyword. So we need to figure out uh, what is the AWS cloud benefit, which references ability to withstand failure with minimal downtime. Ability to withstand failures means if something goes wrong, you will still be available. It's all about availability and reliability. So we know the answer, but let's go through elimination. So the first one, agility over here, it's about how quickly you can adapt changes and it, it's a benefit, but it's not a cloud benefit around the or withstanding failure with minimal downtime. So that's wrong. The next two, B and C, I'll address them together. Uh, both of them allow an architecture to handle increased demand by adding resources, and it doesn't directly address the ability to withstand failures and prevent downtime. So B and C are wrong. And we are left with our final answer, option D here, uh, ability to withstand failure with minimal downtime is high availability. So that's the correct answer for this particular question. Ability of a system to remain operational even when it faces failures, minimizing the downtime, ensuring continuous service. And that's the answer for this particular question. And I believe that was the last question in this episode. That brings us to the end of this episode. I will see you in the next episode of the series soon. If you like the content and want to get notified when I release the next episode of the series, then please subscribe to this channel. This is Exam Tricks and